Hi, my name is Maital. I'm a software engineer writing code mostly in Python and C++. And I also volunteer at Cheat Codes as a Python mentor and track manager. I'd like to share my journey to discover the Python world or tell the story of why I stopped hating Python. That was me a few years back, studying chemistry at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Well, I did like to be exact. That's part of the reason that I switched to a discipline I find more exact, computer science, and it's probably why I really liked C when first encountering and programming in it. Each variable is declared clearly. You're the one responsible for the memory you allocate and use, and I have a special place in my heart for pointers. Also, most of the courses I chose to take as a student were ones that included writing in C and C++. Soon after graduating, I worked at a small startup company in which I helped design and implement an internal software that operates a system for calibrating water meters. Our code was written in C-sharp. The tests we ran on the system produced CSV files, which I initially had to manually analyze and visualize in Excel. After about two days manually creating graphs from data which was in pretty much in the same format for each test, I realized that some automation was in order. I started Googling how to use c -sharp to create an update of Excel files, and it seemed that everything I found was either complicated or an overkill. So I thought, why not give Python a try? I first encountered Python when I had to take a programming course at the mandatory part of my chemistry degree, the one I ditched out on. Later on, studying computer science, I took one course where we actually studied Python and a couple more in which we wrote some small Python script. My first impression on Python was that developers see it as inferior. There's some negative prejudice towards Python that it's too easy or less professional. Since you don't have to deal with all of the important stuff we learn to pay attention to, like memory allocation, passing the right pointer or reference, and defining and choosing the right types we'd like to use, etc. Speaking about types, Python is dynamically typed, which I used to think is really confusing and, well, not precise and clear as other languages. Let's get back to our story. It took me about half a day to get it running, from installing Python to preparing the script and testing it without actually being familiar with Python as I was with c -sharp, in which I was coding for a couple of months at the time. At that point, I realized that Python can and should be another great tool in my toolbox. Here's why I think it should be in yours too. For me, choosing to write in Python held a bit of confusion, some mental aspect of choosing a tool which to me at first also might have looked as inferior. We programmers like to work hard sometimes. Does our ego prevent us from using a great tool? But what are we gaining from choosing such a tool? First, acquiring it is done very fast especially if you're already familiar with another programming language. You could start implement and code very quickly, as I did in the previous example. This is also true if you're new to programming, since Python was designed to be fun to use and to be read and written as similar as possible to English. For example, let's compare this line of code with this one. Both code snippets check whether word starts with prefix. I think we all agree that the second one is much more readable and it took less time to understand. And well, readability counts is one of Python's mottos and it wasn't chosen in coincidence. I'd like to quote a phrase from a book I recently read, A Mind for Numbers, written by Professor Barbara Oakley. It is used to be thought that a walking memory could hold around seven items or chunks but it's now widely believed that the working memory holds only about four chunks of information. You can think of a working memory as a RAM or a blackboard for sketching, processing, and creating new ideas. We don't want to exhaust it. Python's higher ability allows us, amongst other things I will mention later on, to focus on what truly matters when we design and implement our product or feature. It keeps our working memory clear from distractions so we could concentrate on the algorithm, algorithm itself and not waste energy on questions like, hmm, which type should I declare this variable? 
that this number needs casting. Um, don't forget to free allocation when done with this variable, and so on. I'm not saying that the types you're using or the memory consumption doesn't need to concern you. I'm just saying it doesn't need to concern you all the time. Another aspect is the flexibility allowed by Python being dynamically typed. It allows better polymorphism and makes their use of code easier. For example, if a function operates on an argument that has a field called whatever, you can send any type that has such a field to this function. It also makes the code shorter, no need for type declaration, less code to write and read, which leads me to the next advantage. This is a simple example of the famous hello world in Python versus C. Can you see where I'm going with this? But if we want to be more formal, let's talk about Rosetta code. Rosetta code is a programming Kerstomaty site that gathers different implementation to the same tasks in as many different languages as possible. It contains solutions to known problems such as the N-Queen problem, Towers of Hanoi, or calculating the greatest common divisor. It was used as a code base for a comparative study that amongst other questions, try to, to answer the question, which programming languages make for more concise code? To answer this, they measured the non-black lines of code, removing comment lines and considering only code that ran without errors. These were the results. We can see that on average, the length of the coding solutions written in Python was only about a third of the length in other languages such as C or Java. Not to mention c -sharp. Guess it was a good idea to choose Python for these CSV files. Overall, they found that languages that are considered functional or scripting languages provide significantly more concise code. And concise and readable code makes it maintainable. In addition, multiple earlier studies show that bug density across programming languages is largely constant. This means that less code means less option for errors and less bugs. Also, less code means it will be easier to trace those bugs and then fix them. The next point I'd like to talk about is that not all tasks are created equal. If you're writing a embedded system in which real-time performance is a critical issue, I won't say Python should be your main developing language, but it might help you with testing or prototyping and POCing, or as it works for me, analyzing the data you collect. And Sometimes another approach will do. If you like one and you like the other, why not adopting both? CPython implementation, which is Python's most commonly used reference implementation, supports extending Python with C or C++. But there are also modules customized for all Python imp implementations, such as C types or CFFI. So you can combine the best of the two worlds. And finally, we can look uh, over the last few years. Python's getting more and more popular. On GitHub, it is ranked the second most popular programming language. And on TOB, which is the index based on multiple popular search engines, it made the highest jump in popularity in 2020, placing it the third most popular worldwide. So let's summarize the reasons that made me love Python. First, it's quick learning curve that helped me get write into coding a simple and quick solution and save me a lot of time. Second, readability, which makes the code we write less messy and allows us to focus. Remember those four chunks of memory, memory we mentioned earlier? Third, maintainability. Readable code is maintainable. Another developer looking at your code or yourself six months from now will understand what you meant more easily. We also spoke about Python's flexibility in being dynamically typed and how it supports polymorphism and helps us reuse of existing code, keeping our code shorter. And we saw the results of a study on Rosetta code that showed that Python is a super concise language and less code means less bugs and easier debugging. We wrapped up with noting that tasks aren't created equal. You should be able to pick the right tool for the right task and Python might be a great choice. You can also pick more than one tool to solve a problem. 
So I'd like to summarize all by saying that you should ditch the prejudice and biases. Try something new. You might discover a great tool or technique that will help you solve your next challenge. Thank you. If you'd like to reach out, this is how you can do it. And I'd like to say a special thanks for the people who made this talk possible.